Vacation Rental Bros, who just recently rebranded to Beatrice. He um, has been acquiring companies lately, has raised some pretty substantial capital, and is growing like wildfire. So um, I will actually just hand it over to you. Thanks so much for being here. Hey, thank you, Amy. I, uh, you know, I, I put some cards down. We can all share information by LinkedIn. And if you want to really get my attention, just wave this around. If you don't like a certain topic we're getting on, you can raise them back. <laughs> so first question, how many in this room are property managers? How many in this property? Okay. How many are vendors? Okay. I guess they're over there eating breakfast. Okay, real quick, B-trips. Um, you know, this information is going to be about OTAs, and you're probably thinking, why am I qualified to talk about OTAs? <coughs> the reason, in part, is because we're in 19 different markets spread throughout um, the country. So we go as far as Hawaii, we're in Tennessee, South Carolina, New Mexico, and a lot of destinations in Florida, including in Panama City. We get a lot of data, right? So by having a lot of data, that allows us to be able to let everybody know kind of a cross section of information. So when we're making kind of, when I'm making interpretations of data, I'm not just because based on one market. So there may be certain things that are market regionalized. I understand that. But we have a cross section of data, okay? So we have 150 employees. We're operating in 19 locations. We've got about 2,000 properties, okay? That's enough about us. Let's talk about why we're here. Our friends, the OTAs. Okay, so I'm sure most of you realize this, but the industry is changing, right? What's happening is this, this, uh, this market is getting, uh, we're seeing penetration, right? It was low category awareness. If people were here 10 years ago, people really, outside of people who use VRBO really didn't know vacation rentals existed, at least in the way they do now, right? So we've seen this category awareness grow, which has shifted a huge amount of eyeballs onto the space. And we're just at the beginning, right? Why are we at the beginning? Because we still don't have distribution on Expedia, uh, relatively little distribution on Booking.com, and those are the two biggest, largest OTAs in the world. And then there's another big one in Asia called Trip. Uh, and then there's sites like Airbnb where a lot of us have struggled getting distribution on. And we know one thing will happen, though the OTAs will get better and better at distribution because there's so much money. As that increases, eyeballs increase for the category. And so with all this, we have more and more demand, but we don't have a lot of supply, right? So the supply, you in this room control the supply. Okay, that's key. You are the king. And the reason why I say you're the king, you may not feel like it right now, but you will. You get to pick and choose where you list your properties, what your terms are for those properties, what type of properties you list. Listen, if nothing else you gain from this is, you don't have to list all your properties on any one source. You can list a portion. Some of it, it won't even make sense. Like Airbnb may make more sense to list one bedrooms and studios there. It may not make sense to list very large beach houses. There are different clientele. So you get to pick and choose. You have that power. By having that power, that gives you choice. By showing that power, it also gives you leverage. Okay? And we'll get to that leverage. The card kind of hinted at the back. So here's what's going on, right? So you've heard this. Is there a future for property managers? You're probably thinking, wow, this is really bad stuff. You know, we were listing all our properties on VRBO, and they took our phone numbers away. And now they're going to take our emails away, and we're going to go to close communication, and they're going to probably go to generic. They're going to take the name of the property eventually out of the listing, right? You probably call your, son, your property a certain name, uh, certain way of calling it so that it's really easy for you to you, you to know what it is or for someone to search for it in Google. Uh, they're changing their terms of service, TOS, terms of service, right? 
Sometimes they're changing their terms of service on the fly. These companies, these OTAs, uh, they may be making changes without even alerting you. And this creates real problems for those who cannot adapt. If you cannot adapt under this new paradigm, you will go into extinction like this dodo bird here who could not fly. Okay, why are OTAs important? Because there's a lot of revenue that can be driven from them. We didn't start, so we talked about instant booking, right? I, I don't, we'll talk a little bit about matchback, but this is about instant bookings, bookings that are direct. There's real advantages to this because you don't have your reservation sales department's not taking them. So this year, only 30% of our bookings are coming in from our sales staff. We'd like it to be higher, but it's because our on online is trending so high. So but back in 2014, we had very little integration, a very small amount of bookings. Half a million dollars came from OTAs. 2017, 20 million dollars. These are gigantic numbers, so we should care about it. But we also have to be smart about it. By being smart, by being informed, by having the choice, you then have the power. It's not with the OTAs, it's with everybody in this room that raised their hand when they said you're a property manager. You have the power. And how you use it will determine your fate. Okay, what is going on? How do we have so much power? Because this supply is scarce. We don't talk about it a lot. We may over a cocktail. We've been in a housing recession. Supply has retracted. I have a lot of properties we manage in Florida. We are seeing baby boomers who bought these properties to retire. They're retiring now. We had hurricanes and natural disasters. They blew away homes. People are coming into Florida now and buying them, and they're not vacation rental owners. So if you're in an area like Florida, the Sun Belt, where there's a shortage of housing, they're buying these vacation rentals and turning them into residents. There's a scarcity. Who, what other category of travel are people paying a guest traveler fee like this? It is as high as 20%. We've tested it. I have seen 20% on HomeAway. That is how much they are charging the guests for the privilege of booking your inventory. Look at that, 17.5%. So, the way this works is paper booking or subscription. These things are changing a little, but you can do one of the two. So, you most of them it's a paper booking where you're paying a percentage of the, uh, of the transaction. With subscription, you pay a flat fee. They may or may not charge you additional transactional fees. Okay, I think we know how this works. But look, the terms are changing already. Some of you probably have heard that it's 5% PPP. I just pulled up a screenshot, it now says 8%. 8%. 5 to 8%, that's a 60% increase of cost. Are you aware of these terms of service changes? Has Homeway communicated them to you? Anyone in this room, have you heard that your costs are gonna go from five to 8%? Okay. We have seen split testing on subscription price to 5.99. Costs are changing. Be aware as you make decisions that these OTAs are not being transparent. They're not your friends, and some of them are probably not good people for you to want to do business long term the way they act currently. Okay, merchant of record. How many people in this room deal with Airbnb? Okay, so you probably know that Airbnb is the merchant of record. That may be a good thing. You may say, hey, that's great. I don't have to pay the credit card fee. But it also means they control the money. When they control the money, they have the power. And sometimes they take money back from you, and we'll get into that. So be aware 
that letting someone else be the merchant of record may not be in your best interest. Okay? Deposit policies, cancellations, these things have a material impact on your conversion. You should test this. I know that if you go with moderate, you will have a lot more bookings than if you go with strict or super strict. If you have flexible deposit policies where there's a short, certain amount down and money closer in, you're going to get more traction. You may want to play around. You may have certain properties that you want to accelerate liberalized deposits and cancellation policies to book them. You may have other properties, big bedroom homes, special event properties, that you want to have super strict cancellations and very aggressive deposit policies. Be aware that these OTAs, your best properties are probably not the ones you want to list first. You want to take your properties that are challenging and list them on the OTAs, OTAs first, learn how they work, and then progressively put your better properties on. Okay, <coughs> saw about 20 people raised their hand about Airbnb. We're going to talk about this. I'm trying to go fast so we'll have some questions, but raise your hand if you have questions. Okay, so it's free to list your property on Airbnb. They charge you 3%. That's the lowest price of any OTA. They have a different customer base. They're, the smaller properties you have will work better on this channel. Studios, one bedrooms, those will work better on Airbnb. Off season, shoulder season works on Airbnb. Does not require rate parity. All bookings are direct. They don't have phone calls. You get to review the guest. You can send special offers to the guest. Okay. What else? Their customer base is younger. Some of you may not like younger, but younger is the future, right? Because baby boomers are graying, Generation Y. So millennials, here's a stat, 47% of millennials would rather travel than own a house. Travel is very important to them. They're starting to have children, okay? These customers are customers of the future. Other channels are customers of the past. You need to have both. You may decide some of your properties on Airbnb would be a plus. Warnings, Airbnb, look at this. On February 28th, I got a notification for, they wanted an entire refund for a traveler that left on January 2nd. How many of these people, how many people in this room process statements on a monthly basis? Process owner statements. Does anyone not process monthly owner statements? Right, so we have distributed our money. We've already given it to our owners. And here, a caseworker at 58 days says, we have a problem, this guest complained. They had a poor experience, they want a full refund. Okay, this happens with Airbnb a lot. You get a lot of calls from a lot of caseworkers. And so have your eyes open. That's why you don't want to put your better properties on this first. Okay, and don't be fooled by these people. It will happen, it's not a matter of if, it's when. How many people in this room have had the pleasure of working with an Airbnb caseworker? Are they pleasant? Right. Are, are they pro-guest or are they pro-property manager? <laughs> pro-guest. So what do you do? Mark them up. Self-insure. I'm telling each of you in this room, because there's no rate parity, channel by channel, you gauge the risk and you mark up the rates. You have a standard rate that you put on your website, and then you have a rate for everyone else. And the worse they are, the higher the rate is because Airbnb doesn't collect tax. Airbnb doesn't collect damage waiver. Airbnb doesn't collect pet fees. You must mark them up, okay? And the more you mark them up, the better. Because this, this channel is 
difficult. Close communication, it's manual. Here's the cons. Labor intensive, time consuming, not designed for larger property managers. <laughs> Content and pricing is static. They don't have APIs. They don't support complex booking rules, which a lot of you probably have Saturday to Saturday stays during uh, summer and Easter and spring break. Customers want a lot of hand-holding. Rates, terms, they're not easy, so, and they're the merchant of record. This is a difficult channel. I'm not saying don't do Airbnb. I'm saying you should do Airbnb. Mark it up, take your worst property, start there, your one bedrooms and your studios. Okay. Booking.com. Booking.com is the largest OTA in the world. Okay, it's not in North America, but the rest of the world it is. How many people in this room are on Booking.com? 20, about the same as Airbnb. I think some of you are sandbagging. Okay, this is a great portal, okay? You're gonna get people that you normally wouldn't get. Europeans, Asians, different type of people use Booking.com. They have different languages. Um, this site is great and it's growing. Okay, what are the cons? There's some cons here. The first is probably at the bottom, it's 15%. That's what they publish online, which means what? Increase your rates 15% to them, then you have a zero cost. Okay, so they're not charging a guest traveler fee. They're charging you 15%. So you have to mark them up. But there's other problems. They don't, their content doesn't support full rates and fee structures. It doesn't update easily. It's hard to get your content off. So if you have an owner that terminates, goes to another property management company, and they kind of hop around a little here, it's hard to get them off booking.com. And that owner may be freaking out, or that other property management company may be freaking out and saying they're going to get the Attorney General involved. So it's real difficult. You have to push API to them. They don't pull it. That, that's complicated. It's very bureaucratic over there. Uh, and they have a poor interface. So you may want to use a middleman form. We use a middleman. We use a company called Vacay Home. So you can go direct or you can use a middleman. Sometimes when you're starting with these companies, use a middleman first. Let them kind of figure the channel out and then if there's enough revenue there, maybe you go direct, okay? Expedia, okay, they're the number one OTA in North America. How many people have your inventory on Expedia? Okay, five. We had some inventory on Expedia that Homeway ported over and it wasn't booking. I'm gonna to try to Simplify what's going on here. So, even though Expedia bought Homeway, Expedia has been relying on Homeway to get their inventory distributed to Expedia. The problem with Expedia is, just like Booking.com, you have to push the inventory to them. And that means uh, it requires some, some different type of APIs. So the API in general for Homeway has been timing out to Expedia. So your inventory might be there. People can't book it. It's hard to see. That's what happened to our inventory. They couldn't book it. If they can't book your inventory and Homeway pushes it to Expedia, what do you think happens to your listings? They go to the bottom. They collapse because there's no conversion. So. What's the solution? What the solution is? Expedia is going directly to you now. How many people have heard from an Expedia sales rep? No one? You'll, you'll start to hear from Expedia sales reps. They're going to start to go direct. Why? Because Homeway has not been able to enable their inventory and they want to get their inventory on to their network. Okay. There's more work when you go direct, or you can go through a middleman. Here's the questions you should ask. 
What are the point of sales? So Expedia has a large number of companies that are under their umbrellas. HomeAway has less point of sales than Expedia. Kind of weird. Some of the middlemen have more points of sales than HomeAway. So you may pay a little bit more to the middleman, but you may get wider, broader distribution. How will reviews port? So that's a big question. You need reviews. Is HomeAway going to be able to feed your reviews? Will Expedia, will the middleman? How will rates display? Are they gross? Are they net? What's the conversion? Well, we've already discussed conversion is the number one thing that affects you on Booking.com or Expedia. If you're not converting, if it's a poor usability site, a user experience, it won't convert. So, what is the cost model? That's another question to ask. But if you can bump up the rates to Expedia because they don't have rate parity, then it doesn't cost you anything. And what is sustainable? These are the questions you should ask. So the answer to all of these is split test. Split test. Take a little bit of your inventory with one vendor, a little bit of inventory with HomeAway, and if you can work it out with Expedia, go direct with Expedia. We are split testing. We do not believe that HomeAway can pull this off. I have spent a lot of time with HomeAway. They don't even understand the Expedia network. That is a problem. So the people at HomeAway, even though they're owned by Expedia, they don't understand how the Expedia network works. The people at Expedia do. My opinion, Expedia is going to pull it off, not HomeAway. TripAdvisor. How many people in this room use TripAdvisor or FlipKey? Okay. A lot of people used to use TripAdvisor or FlipKey. So three years ago, how many people had their inventory on FlipKey? All right. This, this list of pros used to be a lot bigger. So they're the fastest growing travel portal site. They support feeds of live data. They're very sticky. Thanks to a robust community, you may go to TripAdvisor for hotels, restaurants, and they don't enforce rate parity. Okay. Anyone know who that man is? Jeremy's not allowed to answer that question. Who's that man? Who's that picture? Anyone. There's not anyone who knows who that person is next to TripAdvisor. That is the president of the Vacation Rental Division, Dermot Halpin. Has anyone met Dermot Halpin? I would say that's one of the reasons why that company has not succeeded. They have a disconnection between property management. The president of the Vacation Rental Division has never met a single soul other than maybe someone that used to work there. That is one of the problems. What are the cons? I mean, they're stock. They've lost eight or nine billion dollars of stock value in the last two years. They have enormous technical issues. Now watch this, because we're going to be talking about this, okay? And if anybody thinks I'm unfair, let me know. TripAdvisor has enormous systematic technical issues culture from the top to the bottom of denial and blame the customer. I mean, they used to blame me for their technical issues. These aren't our fault. They're yours. I'm like, no, they're not. Lack of ownership with software partners on configuration issues. It's not our fault. It's HomeAway. It's Escapia. They never accepted responsibility. Poor resources for technical support. They had internal chaos. I think everyone I used to know there is gone. Staff turnover. And then, this is ironic, the most incompetent people I ever dealt with at TripAdvisor got promoted. <laughs> I mean, it's unbelievable, right? Mind-numbing lack of follow-through. Lack of transparency. Pay on 
flip key doesn't go through your, your gateway. Okay? Is there any wonder why people in this room pooled listings? The answer is no. They didn't execute. They didn't perform. They didn't communicate. They treated us with disdain. The president of the vacation rental division doesn't even want to talk to any of us. We have choices. I pulled my inventory after a very brief conversation with Mr. Halpin, who told me take it or leave it. And I said, leave it. So each of you, just like you do with TripAdvisor, has a choice. And that choice is you don't have to put up with it. You don't have to take it or leave it. You can decide what you take and what you leave. It's not an either or. You can keep your crappy properties on a site and take your better properties off. You have that power. So don't let them intimidate you. All right. How many people are on Homeway or VRBO? Okay. Amy said that new changes. Anyone hear about new changes? All right. So there's some pros here. A lot of us probably have historically generated a lot of revenue from Homeway. They own the core vacation rental market. When I say core, I'm not talking urban. I'm talking resort market. So this market, they probably significantly outperform Airbnb or Booking.com. That would be expected. They have a book now function. They rate high in organic search. They have a huge database of previous guests. Sometimes they're your guests. And they're able to email them and get them back to their site. Rate parity is not a requirement unless you sign the pledge. How many people in this room got a pledge? Did you get a little email? Made you sign a pledge? Pledge of Allegiance? <laughs> Pledge rate parity and list all your properties. Promise to be good. In theory, how many are premier partners? Are there any benefits? Okay, I'm checking. I don't know. It may be too early, but I'm not hearing a lot of benefits. Okay. Here are the cons. They have enormous technical issues. It's unbelievable in the last 12 months. They have these things called emergency hot drops. Hot drops are when they just drop a technical fix onto the network and it creates catastrophe. It used to happen maybe once a quarter, now it looks like it's happening every two weeks. Add-on fees were down for a while. Uh, they were deleted. Length of stay was messed up, resulting in massive cancellation for us. Pet fees not working. They set off a data harvest. That's a good word you want to hear when you're calling technical support. Your website's down because we inadvertently created a data harvest. Okay? There are major technical issues at HomeAway. It is getting worse. It is not getting better. There's a culture of denial. And blame the client which confuses the guest, okay? So we get blamed for things that are homeboy's fault. A guest calls and says, you're charging too much. And it's an automated response from homeboy that says, we have a complaint from a traveler who says you're overcharging them. We're overcharging them because they're paying on your site a guest traveler fee. We get an email. You owe the guest a refund. It's a serious complaint. We're going to turn your listing off. We refunded them home away, but you didn't refund them for their guest traveler fee. <laughs> they confuse the guest, and I would argue they uh, create hostility that is not required because they have been inept at this relationship between property management and themselves. Lack of ownership with software partners on configuration issues. So they're doing all these crazy stuff 
like hot drops. Do you think they're alerting their software partners that they're going to do a hot drop? I know there's some people from Blue Chen and other things in here. The answer is no. They don't tell us. They don't even tell their own staff. There's no documentation on these hot drops. They just drop them. And then you're left to pick up the pieces. <coughs> staff follow-up is really bad. Now, I may be being unfair here, but it's hard to get them to follow up right now. They like, they're, they're basically, you have to escalate things to senior management to get the people to follow up. Same thing. What does this sound like? This sounds like TripAdvisor. Doesn't this sound like TripAdvisor? Wasn't this exactly what we were talking about in 2015? It's exactly where Homeway is right now. Lack of transparency. How many people in this room thinks Homeway is being transparent? Cost of subscription has increased significantly. They've removed phone numbers on the site. They're eliminating emails. They're moving to generic listings. Okay, any questions here? Because I have more. Anyone? Anything I left out? I did leave some stuff out. Because there's another page. <laughs> there's another page. They have so many cons. I have. I, I had two pages. I could have gone to three. I made it smaller type. This is unbelievable what's going on with this company. Poor communication. Their policies, they create policies for rent by owner and they apply them to us. I mean, you gotta be kidding me, right? They've been in business a long time. It's hard to dispute reviews and guess problems when they're homeways fault. They blame you. You tell them it's not our fault. They don't say anything. They don't even apologize. Poor testing of updates to their products, updated with bugs and glitches. They are not truthful about their QC process. How many people in this room are on a hash product like Escapia or V12 or RNS? Raise your hand. How many of you have had problems with their owner portal? They're not truthful. They're not truthful about this stuff. You bring it to their attention, they deny it, and then you get in front of them and you show them the errors. And only after it's irrefutable do they say, you're right, we probably should have done a little bit better job with the, big, with the QC process, but we're working on it. Who owns your data? Anyone concerned about this? What else are they doing with your data? Disparate treatment of Homeway software customers. This should be what you are the most upset about. That the people in this room that raised their hand and are on Homeway software get worse treatment, not better treatment from Homeway. You're penalized by being on Homeway software. They have taken resources. They're firefighting other areas. This is the problem with their technical issues. They can't even address their own software, their own clients, who are, in theory, their best clients. They provide the worst service, the worst follow-up, even the worst cost. Does market maker beta hurt your ranking? It's a legitimate question. We saw our numbers drop on Homeway, and I have serious concerns that because we're in beta on Market Baker, it's affecting us. Expedia relation with Homeway is not good. So that's not good. You may be better off with a different software platform that has a better relationship with Expedia than Homeway. Isn't that bizarre? That they don't even get along with Expedia Corporation. And they're constantly changing their business. I mean, this is, this is unbelievable. Did I leave anything out? Anyone have more? All right, pros of OTA middlemen, then we're gonna get to questions. OK, 
Okay, what are middlemen? Middlemen are like these companies that you sign up with, they're gonna take your inventory, they're gonna offer you a lot of different places, and they're gonna do it for a fee. It used to be a company called Leisure Link, and they went out of business. It's, it's a tough field, right? But there's some that are making it work, and it's good for testing, right? It's good. So it's usually free, and they can get you into different places like Asia and Europe, and they can manage a lot of screens. So some of these harder OTAs, it may be easier to first test. So we're on a GoTo with a middleman. We're gonna be on C trip with a middleman. We're on these different sites because it's, it's intensive to try to go direct. It's a lot of resources. So maybe use a middleman first. Oops. All right, I'm not gonna go through this list because it's gonna to take too long, but I wanna show you the options that are out here. Like we're on Beach Guides, we're on Canada Stayo, Stay, Fine Rentals, Hilton Head Rentals, Owner Direct, Maui, Ski.com, Smoky Mountain, and Vacay Hero. We have received bookings all in 2017. So when you start to feel sorry for yourself because all your eggs are in one basket, ask whoever's your marketing person, what are you doing to diversify? Okay? If they don't have a good answer, Maybe you need a new marketing person. Maybe you need a new marketing firm. Time to take some accountability for the marketing people. I understand it's tough. The business is changing. It changes in every industry. We must change with it if we are to survive. Zillow, that's a good source. Tripping, if you can make it work. Face Day, Luxury Retreat, Sea Trip, Agoda, Nine Flats. Here's some third-party consolidators, Blue Tent, Booking Pal, Next Pack, Red Awning, Rental United, Bay K State. We have tested all of them. <coughs> some work better than others. I don't want to say who does or not. You can ask me privately or you can raise your hand. Some work, some don't. Test them. Ask your peers. Get on LinkedIn, ask me, I'll let you know. All right. But are they the solution? The answer is keep your eyes open. Some are not good. Are you the merchant of record? Do they control your money? If not, it could be a leisure link situation where they go out of business taking your money with them or your customer's money. They over promise and under deliver. Wow, that's a shock. A salesperson over promising and under deliver. This is unbelievable, right? Some OT middlemen redirect your inventory to your competitors. Can you imagine that? That's unbelievable. How about they brand your properties with their logo? That happens. You like that. They do a very good job, a terrible job with your content because they don't care. They're just trying to list, they, they want to sign up as many of you as you can, push your inventory. Now, some are better than others. We use Vacay uh, Home, they've been pretty good. Uh, they bid against you in search. They disconnect your feed. It's, it's a nightmare to get your stuff off their, their platform. They lie to you. Could be in the water of OTAs. <laughs> um, they try to sign you into these one-year binding contracts. So this is, this is stuff. I'm not saying don't do business with you. You're going to have to pick the worst of the evils. So the, the best of them are not going to be great, but you can at least get some channels going that you normally wouldn't be able to easily do on your own. Then once those channels get big enough, cut them out. Go direct. Okay? Google. How many people advertise on Google? Okay, now it's kind of weird that I'm calling them an OTA. You know, you think, oh, well, they're advertising, they're pay-per-click. But they're becoming an OTA. Look at this. I signed up for flights from Pensacola to Orlando. Right in search, it gave me a listing of airlines that I could book directly with. Okay, I see some people nodding. You play around with this for airline and even hotels. They're letting you book direct. Look at that, then I click, I want to show more flights. 
I didn't go to Expedia. I didn't go to Booking.com. I didn't go to Hotels Tonight or one of these other sites. I went directly to these airlines. This is coming to the vacation rental industry. Google will be testing initiatives, desktop, mobile, and voice. And they're going to revolutionize how travelers use search, use voice, use applications. And they're going to cut the OTA out. And I'm not saying the OTAs don't have value. Some of them have value, okay? But it's good to have alternatives. So with Google, if you don't have a direct relationship with them, you should start to look at it. If you're too dependent on one channel, take a look at going direct. If you have a middleman doing your Google, you may want to consider doing it yourself. Numbers. Okay, these are the last three months. These are trailing numbers. So we can see, and this, we had a hurricane, we had a lot of stuff that affected our Florida markets. This area wasn't hit by the hurricane. The rest of Florida was devastated. So our Florida markets are down 17% year over year in these three months. Um, we're not in urban areas, uh, but we have still seen growth in the channels. And the growth is 40%, 39%. Who's rising? Booking.com and others. Pull the plug on TripAdvisor. Homeway is accelerating. And Airbnb is <coughs> off against a year ago. Okay, does this surprise anyone? So, what I want to do is start taking questions. So I know you probably have questions. If not, I'm going to ask some questions from some of our experts. What questions, expert, would you like to start the questions with? All right, how many people here got a call from Homeway saying subscription was going to be changed and you were going to be charged for offline bookings? How many people got that call? Okay. How many people have seen recent letter from Homeaway saying that's not the case? It's all one big misunderstanding that they really never intended to do a matchback that it was always going to be in your hands. You were going to have the power. There's no such thing as automated attribution. It was just one big misunderstanding. Anyone see those emails? Okay. All right, show of hands, because I know I've kind of been hard on some of these OTAs. I know there may be some contrarian views here. How many people in this room trust HomeAway? Okay. There is not one hand, and I think there may have been a HomeAway employee around here. <laughs> I mean, it took a long time for them to build up this trust in this industry, and within about a year, They've destroyed it. But I would say all of us have our eyes open now. We all know that if they had the power to do what they wanted to do, they would have. They would have attributed offline bookings <coughs> to home away, whether they were valid or not. They didn't really care. They said, take it or leave it to several people. I know I've talked to them. And they only retreated because of the backlash from the people in this room and from other people like you who said, we're pulling our inventory, we're delisting from home away software, and some of them said, we'll be contacting a lawyer about this as well. And home away retreated, not because they didn't want to do it, because they understood that you had more power 
and they completely misunderstood the relationship. They completely misunderstood that it is a relationship. It's not a take it or leave it. It's not, here's what we want you to do, take it or leave it. It's a partnership, and they forgot it. And so, what I would tell everybody in this room is, don't you forget. Don't you forget, in terms of diversifying your inventory, don't you forget in terms of talking to Google, or talking to some of these middlemen. You must diversify yourself. If you don't diversify yourself, you potentially could go extinct. It's not healthy to have all your eggs in one basket. Okay? Questions on any of these channels? I see one in the back. Go ahead. All right, so diversification of inventory. Uh, back a year, year and a half ago, 90% of our bookings came from HomeAway. Uh, we're getting it now down to in the 75% range. So where is that difference coming from? We're making it up in part from Booking.com, in part from Airbnb, uh, and then what I would call the biggest growth is from these others. Others is like an assortment. Agoda, Smoky Mountain, Ski.com, Perfect Places, Owner Direct, um, Canada State, Beach Guides, these are all a mix. Hey, 10% doesn't sound great, right? Sounds like a lot of work. That's my point, it is a lot of work. But I'm hoping to get it to 15 or 20%, okay? Hey, when we all started this industry, if we we're old enough to remember, 10 years ago there were a lot more listing sites and then HomeAway bought them all up. But now they're coming back. I'm gonna encourage you to support these listing sites because if you're gonna diversify, you need to have other channels. The other question, Google. Okay, if you're in an NDA, you can't really comment on whether you're in a beta test or not. My guess is there's people either in this room or in this industry that are in beta tests with Google and what they're testing, uh, from my understanding, is they're testing going direct with search. So search, instead of going, uh, right now, if, if you type in uh, Orange Beach Vacation Rentals, you're gonna find Airbnb and HomeAway at the top, maybe Booking.com, maybe Expedia. Instead, uh, if, you, if you do one of these things like Air or Air is the one where they're leading on. You're going to get search results that are going to give you something like this up here. And then below it is kayak. You see that? So this will be your first thing. And then you're going to get these, these changes. So if somebody does that, they're going to get a couple <coughs> vacation rental companies that they're going to say that you can go direct with, that they're going to click. And you'll be able to click directly and go right to your website. So how cool is that? Somebody wants pet friendly, two bedroom, beach house for certain dates, and it goes right to one of your properties that's pet friendly beach house available for those dates. How cool is that? Imagine the conversion. It would be very high. That's what's happening with Google. And I suspect that people at HomeAway 
Expedia, Booking.com are concerned. But there's nothing they can do about to stop Google. They have to be better. They have to have a stickier site. That means, in the case of Expedia or Booking.com, having wallets or bundles. You know, bundles are air and car and accommodation. So if you have a bundle, you can compete with this because the guest sees value. If the guest finds value in your channel, they will continue to come to your channel. If the guest doesn't find value in your channel, they will bypass you. And that's what's happening here. And it's going to happen in front of our eyes. I encourage you to communicate with Google. Let them know you may be interested in a beta. If you are, they'll have you sign an NDA. Okay, other questions? That was a good one. Questions here? All right. You mentioned that the emails, we all got the emails that Humboldt was backing away. But um, aren't they kind of manipulating the algorithm so that if we do take all those bookies out on the trip, they're going to be a loss, aren't they? Okay, the question was. If you don't do a matchback, are you going to get penalized? So automated attribution. Can you clarify? Are you talking about subscription app or are you talking about pay per book? Both. Okay, so the question is under this policy clarification quotes. So it wasn't it was like one big misunderstanding. We just didn't understand what they were telling us. Or maybe there was a training issue. That's the other thing I've heard at home why they, they need to retrain people. Um, may need to start at the sea level. <laughs> Look, with, OT, with, with subscription and um, paper booking, uh, they're going to allow you to pick the source code. And if you pick HomeAway as the source of the sale, so when your reservation agent gets a phone call or gets an email, you can put down HomeAway, and then you will pay them a percentage. And even that's weird because initially it was 10%, but then they said it was going to be 10% of the gross minus tax. So it's kind of weird because they keep changing things, and they're not real transparent. It's really hard to know what your cost would be. But if you do that, then that will count as a booking. And that booking then will go to the listing quality score of that property. If you don't do it, you won't pay the money. So you won't pay 10 to 13 percent of the cost of that property transaction. So in theory, the property isn't penalized. You don't get a, an advantage. You don't get a bump. The question I have for everybody in this room is, do you trust them? Because they keep changing their algorithm. How much value is indicating that source code going to provide? How much? And whatever it is today, is it likely to change tomorrow? Do you remember we used to have platinum ads? All of us had a platinum ad or two. Some of us had a bunch of platinum ads. They changed their algorithm without telling us. We bought a bunch of platinum ads. They changed their algorithm. All of a sudden, the Platinum ad wasn't valuable. We paid $1,400 for Platinum. They said, we're sorry. They fired someone. Their evangelist came up on stage and said it would never happen again. Homeway would never communicate like, a, like this again. They would be transparent. They would treat us with respect. None of that has been true. It's the reverse. They've been worse. Communication's worse. They've been less transparent. They told us to take it or leave it until they got caught. Then they said we misunderstood or people at HomeAway weren't properly trained. Look, we are not fools. We may have been fooled once. We're not going to be fooled again. So what I would tell you is you may decide that there's an advantage to showing that attribution. And that's up to you. I would test it. I would take a look at where that property shows up the day you click the little source code to Homeway. And then 
a couple days later where it shows up and see if it really got you a value for the 130 or 140 or 150 dollars it cost you for that match back. It's a lot of money. Hopefully there's a lot of value. And then also see every week how long it lasts before it collapses. Good question. Any more questions? It's your chance. A lot of people were very angry. I saw their letters. I saw their comments on Amy's Veerman Intel website. People were angry. Now's your chance. Okay. Hey, what comes what comes after um, this this self pay program? You know, right now you, you see what I'm saying. I mean, what what's next? It's not a sustainable program in my opinion. What what are we gonna be looking at three, six, nine months down the road? Okay, so the question is, where is the future of Homeway? How are they gonna try to get money from us? Um, I can't answer that question because I'm a logical person and they've been doing illogical things, right? Okay, so, I mean, to me, they need to cleanse themselves and people who make these decisions because they have made really idiotic decisions. Okay, when, before I started vacation rentals, I was the director of e-commerce for a company called the Bradford Exchange. Bradford Exchange did these plates. They advertised on Parade and different magazines like that. They had villages, Thomas Kincaid Village. Maybe some of your moms had, they bought these villages. And they had trains and gas lamps. And all of this stuff, it was unbelievable. Little figurines. They would go and get customers at a loss. At massive losses. Because the lifetime value of the customer was so high, these customers were spending hundreds of dollars per year on junk they were getting from China. They were just, it was unbelievable, right? And that's what they did. And they, and they have moved to charm bracelets, the whole bit, right? So it was called lifetime value. And ROI, return on investment, was not made on a one-year basis. It was made on the lifetime value of the customer. These people who made this decision made a decision without even reflecting what the lifetime value and what the true ROI damage would be to their company. I mean, this is really unbelievable. So you're asking me a question for me to be logical. I can't find a logic for the way they conducted business over the last year. It doesn't make sense. They need our inventory to succeed. And I've heard the analogy, I mean, from our company, 80 to 85% of our bookings are instant booking, right? Only 15% would be offline. So they're, they sacrificed the entire listing to chase, as someone said, pennies under the sofa. Why? They were, they, every year that went by, there were less and less instant bookings. Why did they do this? They did it because one, the obvious answer is they're greedy, but the answer that's more to the point is the people there are ignorant. <laughs> I mean, they're not thinking through what a relationship is worth. We have relationships with Homeway that date back 10 years or more. How valuable is that relationship? And people were willing to burn the bridge over looking for pennies in the sofa. To me, that's an executive issue. So as bad as I feel for these poor homeway people that call me and don't really like to call me, they're just pawns on the chessboard. The real person that needs to be here is John Kim. He needs to explain himself. Why did he do this? And how is he going to set the culture at Homeway to make sure you trust Homeaway again. Until John Kim sets the culture to set up trust among us, none of us will feel good about having our listings on Homeaway for the long term. So it's going to take people at the top of Homeaway 
to start to communicate directly with us, not through proxies, how they're going to regain the trust and how they're going to make this relationship right so that we feel they are a partnership, a partner with us. And when you have a chance to talk to someone at the executive level of home away, I don't want you to be nice, I want you to be blunt. And you need to tell them what you tell me, or what you tell Amy, or what you put in email. Because you're only going to get one chance. And if you basically go, nice to meet you, thank you, that's not going to resonate. You need to look them in the eye and let them know what they did to you, how it made you feel, and then directly the revenue impact to home away, and what it's going to take to regain that trust. Okay? Thank you very much. <laughs>